Oh, it's cold outside, but it's warm in here. And we're going to start tearing apart the supercharged 3800 Fiero engine next. Toys for life. All right, guys, as promised, we're going to jump right into this. I'm going to take the supercharger off the lower manifold so I can do some porting and some uh, blocking of the coolant lines from the manifold to the supercharger to the throttle body. So the first thing I always like to do is disconnect the negative ground cable from the battery. I've got the spark plug wires marked, and no, that's not the actual cylinders, but I've got this video for reference, so they'll go on the right spot. And I do like to take some good footage of the entire engine area, all the stuff I'm going to be taking off. That way, uh, when I go to put it back together, you'll be surprised. Your mind can play tricks on you, and things aren't always as obvious putting them together as they were when you took them apart. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do since we're taking off the supercharger and the lower intake manifold, it does have coolant in it, and I don't want coolant in my oil. So I'm going to go underneath and disconnect from the passenger side here where the rubber hose meets the coolant line that goes to the radiator. We'll drain it from there, and that should get most of it out. The bedpan is full. So now there's really no perfect way to do this. So I'm just going to start by taking off the throttle body pulling back the cold air intake and starting to remove some of the hoses and wires so I can pop the supercharger off. Oh, and it's always a good idea to take an air hose if you've got one and blow everything out really good so you're not having any debris drop inside the engine that doesn't need to. First up, let's remove the grill from the driver's side. Then I'll go ahead and remove the throttle cable and get that out of the way. Next, remove the wires for the throttle position sensor, idle air control valve, and mass airflow sensor. And then we'll go ahead and remove the cold air intake tubing from the throttle body. Now, really, all we have are three nuts that hold the throttle body to the supercharger, and we can pull it out of the way. Next, I'm going to go ahead and remove the main vacuum port and start to remove some of the wiring and release some of the clips that I have fastening it in place. Okay, a little update here. We got the fuel rail off and I just want to show you these injectors they're pretty sensitive and the last thing you want to do is bung up the end of them so I've cleaned with a nice fresh towel the end of each injector and I've wrapped them in paper towel and tape so if anything bumps into them there won't be any damage the injectors pop into the cylinder head and this is one of the reasons you want to do a good job cleaning with the air hose before you take these out because you don't want a bunch of junk falling in there. Inevitably there's going to be a few things but in a little while I'll take a vacuum cleaner and a cloth and try to clean that out even better and minimize the amount of debris that falls into those holes. Now I'm going to pop the supercharger off and it's really just a series of bolts at the bottom here. I'm going to break them all free by hand and then I'll use an electric impact to spin them off the rest of the way. It's a boy. Supercharger has left the premises. It's sitting on a nice clean board. And we'll remove the intake manifold. I almost forgot to remove the EGR tube and that would have been bad. It took a fair bit of prying in this corner but just be careful and apply the pressure as even as you can and hopefully you won't break anything. It's inevitable when you pull the intake off you're going to get some coolant that spills out into here. So I like to wipe it up as quickly as I can without knocking any debris down into this valley. So now what I'm going to do is along the whole perimeter I'm going to scrape carefully and degrease so I can lay a piece of cardboard in there with some duct tape and seal off the valley. Then I can go ahead and run a tap through all these holes and clean out everything uh, and degrease everything without worrying about getting any additional debris down here. So it's all about kind of pretending you're in an operating room and being as clean as possible. My least favorite part about work like this is just cleaning the gasket surfaces. So it's been a little over an hour, got the razor blade, and just a whole bunch of paper towels, even a couple pieces of sandpaper to get some carbon off. And now this part is buttoned up 
And we can move our attention to the manifold and the supercharger. All right, I've got the manifold on the bench. It's pretty well degreased. And let's talk about the first mod we're going to be doing, which is to block off these coolant passages that allow 180 degree plus coolant to heat up the supercharger and the throttle body. So the hot coolant comes up, I think, out of this hole into the supercharger, over to the throttle body, back into the supercharger, and then down into this hole. So we'll plug these two off, and I'll show you where this goes into the supercharger. All right, so here's the supercharger, and on the bottom, it goes in that hole there, I believe, and then it comes out the front of the supercharger where the throttle body connects, and then it goes back in that hole, and then out this hole back down into the manifold. And it just runs through the throttle body in that little cavity right there, and that's to heat it up for, you know, these cars were driven all over the United States, and some of these would be in frozen climates, 20, 30 below. GM had to be sure that these wouldn't freeze up and cause accidents. So that's why it's there. So for me, this car is only driven in the summertime. It's just a toy. So I don't need that extra heat in the throttle body. I don't need it uh, transferring into the cold air intake. And I certainly don't need it in the supercharger because at the end of the day for drag race days, it's just going to slow me down. So that is why we're going to block off these passages. Now we can't just go and block the coolant flow between these two because this is designed into the cooling system to have coolant flow through here. So what we need to do, there's this cap on the end right here, and we'll take this off quick. So you can see there's two holes here, and I can feel with my hand there's a wall between the two, so they are not connected in this direction. But if I stick my finger up in here, you can see where this one comes out right there. And this one comes out right there. So what we need to do is take a die grinder with an aluminum bit and carve a channel in here so the coolant has an alternate path so that it continues to cool the lower intake manifold as designed by GM. And that's going to work just fine. Next, I'm going to go ahead and lay the supercharger gasket on the lower intake manifold. And then using a red marker, I'm going to go ahead and trace the area around the plenum underneath the supercharger. Here's a close-up look of how much material is there that can really be removed. And we'll go ahead and do that with the die grinder. All right, I finished opening up the lower intake manifold. I'm not sure if it's going to make a difference, but it, it definitely removed a fair amount of material around the entire perimeter. So in my mind, that really can't hurt. It can only help. One other thing, there's quite a bit of aluminum shavings all over the place from cutting through this manifold like butter. I got this carbide kit from Harbor Freight. It's a set of four for soft metal, aluminum, and brass, that sort of thing. 69 bucks. The reviews were good, and I give them two thumbs up. Guys, that's going to do it for part two of making the supercharged 3800 Fiero faster. In part three, we'll go ahead and tap the holes, install the plugs into the lower intake manifold, as well as start on porting the supercharger. Guys, if you like the video, hit that thumbs up. If you got anything out of it, please hit the subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.